Hi everyone, here's a quick tutorial on how to make this uh, jellyfish. Uh, it's not particularly detailed, um, it's more of a just sort of a background thing really. So uh, first we're going to do is add in a UV sphere, uh, go into solid mode with a Z, and then into edit mode with tab, and then if you press Alt Z, uh, this will toggle X-ray and that will allow us to delete any vertices hiding behind. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically use this to make the top shape. Um, so I think I'll delete these, maybe one more just to here. And then holding Alt and clicking that will um, edge select all of these. And what I want to do is make sure proportional editing is on, uh, which you can um, use O on the keyboard uh, shortcut. And then if we scale it down, what you'll see is it's going to start pulling all of them in a bit uh, as it gets further away. So we just sort of want, I think that sort of a shape really. What you want to do before anything like this really um, is go and look at a bunch of references, um, which I've already done on things like Pinterest or whatever. So once we've got our uh, rough shape here, I'm going to come over to modifiers, add modifier and subdivision surface. That will just smooth everything out a bit and then and also give us a, um, more ge geometry. Uh, which we'll need in a second and um, we'll go shade smooth with right click and we're going to add a um, displacement modifier which is this one here this is really good for just adding randomness um, without actually having to model any geometry so what we'll do is if we go to um, add a new texture here click new you see it's going to go um, odd and then if we go over to our this button here this will take us to a texture because what we do we now we've we've added one we need to edit it basically so if we go show the texture and then up here type we're just going to change this to uh, I think clouds and you see it's gone mental so what we want to do is we want less a we want less of it uh, in terms of how it's affecting the ge geometry oh, I can't say that word for some reason and also um, how often the, the pattern is repeated so what we want to do is we want to change the size and bring it up to basically as big as we can go and that already looks better I'm just going to turn off uh, x-ray again just so you can see the geometry a bit better and um, so once we, we've um, change the size here go back over to the modifiers and what we're going to do is we're just going to change how much it affects our geometry with the strength here so I'm just going to bring this down you can play with this um, you know find something you really like and what I'm also going to do is just going to edit these um, this bottom ring here you'll often see with jellyfish they kind of have um, little parts sort of poke out sort of almost evenly so what I'm going to do is up at the top here select uh, checker deselect and you'll see that basically well it does what it says checker deselect and making sure that my um, proportional ed editing is still on press G just press Z I'm just going to give it a little bit less just something like that just to sort of give it um, th this sort of ridge at the bottom here um, and we can add, if we want, another subdivision surface to smooth these out afterwards. Um, but it, it depends, you know, where's this going? Is this going to be in the background, and you, you know, and you want the silhouette, or are you going to, you know, are you going to be a bit closer? That's when you sort of mess around with adding extra little bits. So that'll do just for the top, just for now. Um, and what we want to do now is add the the sort of tentacles. Now you see with the with jellyfish they kind of have this big sort of mass of um, sort of tentacles in the middle and then a few sort of skinnier ones out on the side so I'm going to start with the ones in the middle and to do this I'm going to add in a uh, a plane so shift A mesh plane and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete well first of all I'm going to move it over to the right so I'm going to press G X 1 in edit mode um, not that it really matters. But, uh, we delete these uh, vertices, and so we're just left with two vertices, one edge. And then what we're going to do is uh, add a screw modifier, which is uh, 
there it is uh, and make sure if you've rotated this make sure that your rotation and scale are set um, that goes the same with these you, you'll find that your displacement modifiers will go wrong things like that if your scale uh, and rotation is not right so that's right this one's right and what we want it to do is we want this to go down basically so if we use this screw um, you, you you can see it's starting to go down while so it's maintaining a 360 degree, degree screw and going down um, minus 8.5 meters so this is also a bit big so what I'm going to do is come into edit mode select these two vertices and just scale them down um, I'm also going to bring them just sort of so they're in the middle here um, then I'm going to select this one and bring it in and what you'll see is now my ta the this the actual sort of the width is uh is is a lot thinner which is what we want now this is too much so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring the angle down and the screw amount oops way up and also bring that down oops ah see now this is what i ran into before now what this screw is doing is it's working off of where your origin point for the geometry is. So what we want to do, if, we, if I just select these and just sort of bring them a bit closer in to the origin point is that little orange dot there. Now I can have a much more of an angle while not going really far out. Um, so we'll bring we'll bring that up. You know, you, you can mess with this a bit all you want really. Um, I'm going to bring that just in a little bit there we go that's m a bit more what I'm after something like that really now what I will do is um, I'm gonna add a subdivision surface again afterwards here just so we've got some more geometry because we're gonna displace these now so well before that actually I'm gonna add a simple deform and what that's gonna do is it, you've got a couple of options here and we just want this one taper because what we want it to do is to, is to get thinner as it comes down um, there we go and change the axis I, I, you can get some good results with all of these to be honest so it's worth just having a little look around I think that one's best for now and maybe just like that. don't worry about it getting too thin because we're gonna basically copy these so you know it will it'll work um, so once we've done that let's add a uh, displacement because you, you'll notice you can you could just stop here if you were doing um, you know if it was really far away you could stop here but if you want it to be a bit closer you'll notice that they often they're sort of a bit frilly these parts on some of the jellyfish that I was looking at anyway so if we add in a um, displace again here we go I'm going to add in a new texture. I'll call this one tentacles. I probably should have named the other one. I've, I'm honest, it's a bad habit of mine, but you really, it does help you out so much if you name everything as you go. Um, so, again, if we click this little button, it will take us to our texture. So, we want this one um, to be marble, I think, was what I used. Now, you see, that is way too much. So, this one we just want to mess around with the side a bit and also bring this way down there we go something like that it's just just adds a bit of randomness it just which is really important i think for for making things look a bit more i mean this isn't going to look realistic but just making things look a bit more believable um so once we've done that, I'm going to add one more display. So let's tidy these up, these little arrows, just to keep things neater. Add uh, another displace. And go new again. This little button take us over. And I want to change this one to, I think it was this. And then whack the side right up. So what, what we've done is that the first displace adds sort of smaller deformations or displacement over the um, uh, down the tentacle whereas this one is going to be more um, larger sort of shape so you see and I can mess around with this a little bit just to get something that I want um, and that will do so 
I'm going to add another subdivision surface, but again, if you if this is just a small thing in the distance, don't worry about it so much. Um, just neatens things up a little bit, and you could also add a solidify modifier as well. Um, one of the th one of the things I was doing, you might see in the thumbnail, this is a lot more jagged. I actually used a lot more of this one, but it was I had I solidified it and I was adding subdivision surfaces, and it it was getting quite overly geometry heavy for no reason really um, so there we go that's our tentacle and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift D um, and rotate on the Z axis which is RZ and then again and what we'll do is we'll just go into the screw modifier and we'll just change the screw length uh, a few times on the different ones just again it's just variation just makes such a difference just having that and you, and you could go in um, and maybe change the, the deform factor a little bit um, be careful if you change any of the displacement ones though because if you change um, the actual texture it will change it for all of them but you can change the strength and stuff individually so there we go that will do for now just, just as an idea um, and then like I mentioned earlier, they often have these sort of thinner um, sort of tentacles out on the side here. So there's two options for that. We can either just copy one of these, maybe shrink it down and put it, they, they sort of come off this sort of underside here. Um, so press 7 to go top view and then we're holding down Alt and the middle mouse button that will let me switch around. And I'll just add a couple of these on here. This is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is you could add curves. So if you add in a curve and then draw it and give it a bit of thickness, um, it does look a bit neater. But again, it depends how far away you know you're going to be. So that'll do for now. Obviously, this is really rough. You know, if you want to, you know, you can spend a bit of time making these look really neat. You know, uh, again, if you want to add in more geometry, depending on how close you are with more subdivision surfaces and and add in the, you know really messing with these displacements a bit more um, you you can sort of take it to the you know upper level if you like so that will do for the the simple jellyfish uh, now let's go and add in a um, uh, material so I've made this sort of bioluminescent one um, again it depends where and what this jellyfish is doing in your scene what do you want to use it for if you you know, bioluminescence looks cool, but maybe you just want something a bit simple and you know, uh, transparent. But we're going to go with this. So, I'll um I'll remove it and make a, a fresh one. So, just go new. Uh, sorry, if you come over to the material properties and click new, uh, let's try and do what we were saying. Uh, naming things. So this is jellyfish. So what I'm going to do in my material editor here. Um, first thing, if you're using EV, um, make sure in the material properties you come down here and tick screen space fractions. And you'll also need to come up to the render properties and, and turn them on here. I don't know why this isn't on as standard in EV, but if you know, you, you just need to do that really. If you want to use any sort of transparency or anything like that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to mix um, the, the principled uh, BSDF that's here with an emission uh, but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to add go, just turn the transmission all the way up on here you won't see anything because there's no light um, tra uh, the transmission basically makes things <laughs> clear but EV doesn't really like clear um, uh, materials that much you know you can't you can't see through that at the moment but that you know you need to mess with some other bits and bobs we're not going for a completely clear look here so next thing I want to do is add a uh, emission shader so shift a searched emission uh, I'm going to use a shortcut from node wrangler add-on here it's well worth getting it's free it's part of blender I think you just need to go into edit preferences um, and search node wrangler and just tick it um, and then what that lets me do is if you press shift and control and right click and drag 
that'll automatically mix. If not, you can just do Shift A mix shader. Um, and what I want to do is I want to mix these two by the factor of um, using the Fresnel node. Basically, what this does, if I add in a color ramp, just plug that in here. Uh, and again, this is a node wrangler. If you shift control left click, that previews whatever node you click on. You can see basically it, it just sort of catches the edges. Uh, there's a mathematical thing for this, but I ain't the one to explain that to you, unfortunately. So what we can do is if we, we play with these, I think I want to flip these around actually. And we can just sort of get it catching the edge. Uh, maybe you want to want it to be a bit softer than that, really. That's better. Just turn that. There we go. That's the sort of thing I'm looking for. Just around the edges and just in here. And w then if we mix our emission and our principal, um, oops, plug that in there. And because you know it's just still viewing, but if you uh, again shift control left click on here, that will. Um, I'll sort that out. So now if we give a uh, it's not really working how I wanted it. I wonder if there we go, that's a bit better. There we go. Uh, so it just gives that sort of a bit of a glow, but it, it sort of makes it look like there's more inside, if you if you can see what I mean. Um, and you can do more to this. Something quite cool, um, and this is just how I use gradients in like all of my materials. So if I go Shift A and add a gradient uh, texture, and then this again is with Node Wrangler. If you click on that and press Control T, that'll add in the texture coordinates and mapping. These these are just how this gets applied over your object. So if I'm gradients always seem to work best with generated. What you need to do is make sure this is um, put 90 degrees on the, the Y rotation. That's just so that rather than the gradient from going from like left to right or right to left, I can't remember what it is from default, this will now go from um, top to bottom. If we add in a color ramp, plug that in here uh, and then just maybe if we just a bit of green, just a little subtle change. Pink, I think they they're quite often, but you know this is this is stylized really. Um, and then I'm just going to add this uh, material to the rest of the tentacles, and really quick, rather than going on here, clicking on it, then add the material. Uh, oh, I think that was the last one I made. Add material. What we can do is if you just select the ones that you want that don't have uh, material on it or th a different material and then shift click on the one with the material that you want. If you press control L, you'll see this link materials come up and then that adds your material to all of the others. I sp spent so long clicking adding materials, uh, you know, until I found that out. <laughs> Um, so there we go. That's it, really. Uh, like I say, you can take this further, um, but there are loads of tutorials out there for like really detailed jellyfish. But I've just I was making one the other day, and I was like, why is it so difficult? I just want a simple, um, a simple jellyfish, basically. Um, so that's it. What you can do is just parent these uh, tentacles to the body. So if you change them, move them around. So if we just shift, uh, drag, select these and then shift click the top um, and then press control P and then we can parent these to this so now if we move this and rotate it or if we want to scale them you know and that sort of thing um, and that's it so there you go uh, this is you know one of the early videos on here so if you know if there's any feedback or whatever please do let me know in the comments anything you'd like to see um, that'd be sweet so thanks a lot cheers bye